the short-sighted versus the visionaries. I, I don't really like doing verses, you know? I mean, I, I consider myself a relatively peaceful person. I get my rocks off and my creativity. That's when you see me like, whoa, that's when I transform, when I'm able to tap in to my creativity, singing, dancing, my theater background. Um, that's really, that's where I exert my energy. So I don't really have the energy nor the desire with having this amazing gift of creativity to be spending my energy fighting people, combating people. I, I get that out when I'm playing the keys. I get that out when I'm dancing. I get that out when I'm singing, belting my heart out. I get that out when I'm writing my music. All of that energy goes into that. I get that out when I'm rapping. I get that out, you know. So by the time it's all said and done, I've poured my heart, my soul out to my performance, to cultivating my craft. I don't have time to be going back and forth with people. But people do like to lure me in. And, um, you know, I do question what is the idea of, you know, hate speech or monitoring someone's speech or saying that these, they, you know, things that are unspeakable, policing people's speech. And the conflict between that and what, as American citizens, we were sold of amendment rights or beyond American citizenship, their constitutional rights, God-given rights. The fact that we were given a mind, we were given a mouth, we were given a mind to be able to cultivate. This beautiful mind that we were, that we were given to be able to tap in to uh, what, what we're here to do, to use our mind to inspire, to use our mind to thought provoke. And some of us are here to be peaceful. Some of us are here to be antagonizers. Some of us are here to be provokers. People say thought leaders, thought provokers. I think that uh, it's time to shake things up a bit. Personally, I think that it's time to challenge a lot of things that we've just come to accept. And one thing that I know, whether you, whether you see the thing is, when you tap in, right, when you tap into your creative source, you can run, you can run, you can run, you can run, you can run. But you're, but Allah, God looks at it as cowardly. Because before you got here, you made a contract with God. Before you even got here, incarnated on this earth. You said, I am going to pledge my life to do certain things. And fortunately or unfortunately, your life path may have been very conducive to that contract or it could have been contrary to that contract, for example. People are uh, somewhat myopic and I know that I can be a little bit, follow me here. People are somewhat myopic in their understanding of our creator, in their understanding of God. What does that mean? It's myopic meaning a small view, a small perspective, a minuscule piece-sized view of what God is, our creator is, right? So we're talking about the visionaries and the short-sighted. Well, God is love. How are you over here rapping, talking about killing people, taking people out, talking about dancing in people's blood, talking about bloodbath, talking about murder? And then you call yourself a believer. God is love. God is purity. God is a killer. God is a lover. God is a killer. God is an assassin. When people die, who do you think takes them out? When people take their last breath, God says kum faya kum, that means that everything under the sun, even a leaf that falls on the ground, God has ordained. So everybody dies. Who's, who is deciding that? Who is making that final judgment call? It's God. God's a killer too. God is an avenger. God is a humiliator. God is a glorifier. 
So it's time for you to kind of restructure your view, your concept of what God is and not try to fit God into that comfortable box because God is all encompassing. And so when we talk about the short-sighted versus the visionaries, and we talk about these gifts that we've been given by God, right? Because we've been given these gifts by God. These very beautiful, beautiful gifts. Every single one of us has this special calling. And I have to say that my understanding of God is that it's not God versus the devil. God created the devil. So there's no match between God versus the devil. That's not an equal match. But God gave us free will to worship who we choose, to pledge our souls who we, to who we choose. But God also gave, when, before we got here, we had contracts. We had agreements. We had things that we said that we would do, purposes that we promised God that we would fulfill. And so if your contract is to be a, a hitter, if your contract is to be an assassin for the kingdom, and you're not doing that, you're not fulfilling your purpose. If your contract is to be a truth teller and you're not doing that, you're not fulfilling your purpose. What does that mean? A truth teller means that you deal with the consequences of telling the truth, but, you, but your contract, your heart, your soul, your mind, every fiber of you before you got here, before you incarnated on this earth, you had a contract with your creator and you said that no matter what, I'm going to tell the truth. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that the whole world could be against me, but I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to tell the truth because that's what I, that's what I signed up here to be a truth teller. That is a part of my calling and that is part of my purpose to tell the truth. And so if that is a part of your purpose and that is a part of your calling, the punishment that people who didn't sign up to tell the truth would receive for lying would not be the same punishment that you would receive for lying because you're literally breaking your contract of being a truth teller. And that's telling the truth by any means necessary. That's telling the truth no matter how abrasive it may be. It's telling the truth no matter how much resistance you may have to telling the truth. It's telling the truth no matter if everybody turns their back on you, if people don't like you, if you get X out of social circles. It's just plain and simply telling the truth. The God's honest truth. And if that's what you're here to do, then that's what you must do. And so we see things from a different perspective because as visionaries, we've been given this, this insight and the insight is saying, well, time out. There's a lot of facades going on. A lot of things that aren't true being pervaded. And we see the manipulation of optics and we see that a lot of people are willing to kind of go along to get along with these, these lies or these, this, this, these, this, this deceit. And as truth tellers, like that's like again, that that's say like against everything that we stand for, like our moral fiber and like literally our soul contract. So we can't, we we can't, we can't. Understanding that the commitment that we made to our Creator, we are not allowed to to lie. We're not allowed to manipulate optics. We're not allowed to. We just we're not allowed to. Um, and we don't fear. And so when I hear people say, you know, that's dumb not to play the game. If the game is a deceitful game, then it's not, it's not dumb not to play the game because we understand that the victory is tied into fulfilling our, our soul contract. And if our soul contract is to tell the truth and we understand that the game to play is how to win in this world, but it doesn't matter at the end of the day because our soul contract is to tell the truth, then we know that playing the game would probably just be a form of temptation. And we've been told early on that the world is full of, full of glittery distractions and temptation and all these things very luring and seductive mechanisms to get us away from the things that we are here to do, our calling, our purpose. So it's, it's, it's interesting because I think that you gotta, you gotta look at the world in a, in a different way. If you manifest, right? Because we could have been here at any given time. 
right? We could have been, I, I could have come here on this earth in the 1970s. I could have come here on this earth in the 20s. I could have come here in, in year to 3000. But as a truth teller, to come into the world where the culture is a culture of deceit, you have some serious resistance working against you. You have some very serious uh, forces that challenge you. Um, one of the laws of Ma'at is to not like go overboard in imposing your way or whatever, like understanding like you got your own thing to do. You don't go overboard. You don't uh, bend over backwards to impose your way upon other people. So when we talk about certain things, you know, we just have to look at it from the point of deceit. If there's somebody, for example, that appears a certain way and doesn't tell people who they really are and is luring people in, but through their appearance, that is deceit. That is deceit. And that's not fair also. If God gave us free will, that means that God gave us the truth, transparency in all options to decide for ourselves with the respect that we have enough brain power to make the right decisions for ourselves. That's, that's respect. But to come in to trick somebody, to manipulate somebody, that's very disrespectful. That's very deceitful to say that I'm coming in looking a certain way and I know I'm not really that and you and and there are people that are like this is how I get down and you know that they get down like that but you don't care you're you're disrespecting their free will that's a disrespect of someone's free will their free choice you be straight up straight up straight up with somebody and then you allow them you you give them the respect to be able to choose what what it is that they want to do with their lives so you know what i'm saying like look as a um a child of god i find my gifts uh beyond words beyond words um are like the highlight of my life and I'm very, very grateful to be gifted. I'm very, very, very grateful. Every day it should be a celebration of your gifts. You, great Gratitude is something to express. Of course, you wake up, you thank God for the day. You thank God for waking you up. Some people didn't wake up in the morning. You thank God throughout the day for everything, the food that you eat. You thank God, the roof over your head. You thank God. You think constantly thanking God, thanking God for everything, right? You get a new idea. I thank God. That was a great inspiration. Thank you. You motivated me. I'm blessed. But you know, gratitude is also being excellent, being great, and living up to that, living up to your greatness. That is a form of gratitude. That is celebrating your gifts. That is celebrating your talent. So you gave me these gifts. Let me cultivate it. Let me spend time and fuel it and invest in it. That's gratitude. And so I understand that we're in this spiritual war. And it, it is the short-sighted versus the visionaries in the sense of that I was a very impatient child and um, patience was something that I have, I've had to learn and it is something that I'm still grappling with, but it's a divine quality. Patience is a virtue because really when it comes down to it, when we talk about those who have sold their souls versus those who have not sold their souls, it really is a matter of patience. The idea of, no, I want my heaven on earth now. I want the things of this world right now. Some men be, may be like, no, I want my beautiful model right now. And I want the money and the cars and the fame right now. Versus somebody, some people say, well, this is the word. The word is, is saying that, yes, I will have peace right now. I'll have, you know, joy and all of these things right now, but my rewards may come later if I sacrifice and things like that. That's, for some people, that's unbearable. They're not willing to endure those type of things. 
they're not willing to endure the persecution, the name calling. So they say, nah, I'll take it right now, whatever I have to do. But here's the reason why I felt like um, this, this plan for my life was not well thought through. You know, I think that the devil is known to be very clever, but the devil is not, he's not known to be a loving force. God is love, right? And so the devil loves no one, including those that follow him. And I believe that regardless, you end up doing yourself in. As long as you sell your soul, you pledge your soul to the devil, you end up doing yourself in because it's bondage. So you have people that are, it's more important for, for them to look the part. And this is where deceit comes in, looking the part, right? Looking successful than actually being successful. Because as believers, we understand that the ultimate victory is the salvation of our souls. And so a lot of times the short-sighted understand that I would rather look cool. I would like, rather look like I have it and, and be in turmoil internally or be in bondage. Because they, they don't, they're not truth tellers. They're not going to tell you exactly what they did to be able to get what they have. That's against what their code and whatnot. So they're like, I would rather people think that I have it and be soulless. Than, and I'm more, I'm not going to say selfish, but I'm more like, on the line of, I can look like I don't have, but I do have. Like, I, I would rather me love me and the world hate me. And the world doesn't hate me because there's plenty of people just like me, chosen ones and believers and people who love life and, you know, people who have good hearts and all those things. I got a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. But I'm just saying, I would rather feel good about myself and the world feel bad about me. I would rather have... Uh, the personal knowledge of the, the salvation of my soul and the contentment and the bliss that that brings and the peace that that brings and the internal peace that that brings rather than having uh, turmoil inside and a, a conflict inside. And, you know, there's people that look in the mirror and it's like what they what they see is like, like they can look like bombshells to the world. But when they look in the mirror, all they see are demons very ugly you know monstrous demons and so for them the optics were more important than what they actually are this is the short-sighted versus the visionaries but bottom line is every day should be a jubilee every day should be a celebration of your gifts every day should be an honor of your gifts every day is a blessing every day is a day to, to definitely celebrate all the gifts that you've been given, the life that you've been given. And um, bottom line is, you know, for me, I, I feel like with the agents of shaitan, that uh, we all are up in this spiritual war, everybody, whether we like it or not. Um, it wasn't wise because I, I believe that maybe if the, the objective or the goal, you know, I can analyze this from a few different points. I think that one, one thing is like, um, with the persecution and the rearranging of the narrative and the lies and the rumors and the slander that they put on my name, it was a deliberate plan to say, look, we sold our soul to the devil, so we're the winners. We're the ones that got, we're the fancy ones. We got the cars, we got all of these things. Look at this righteous person, look at the believer. This person's struggling, so it was more like trying to manipulate um, the optics in that sense. But also, you know, I'm very much an intellectual and I uh, very much am a believer. I'm very, very God conscious. It's, uh, it, the idea of, of selling my soul just seems like I would be setting myself up for a life of such despair and misery. I think that it would even affect me. The despondency would even affect me more than other people. I feel like I would literally be paralyzed and I, I would just be like, 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 I, I don't even like to tap into that. I don't even like to tap into what that what that would feel like to not have a soul. Ugh. I couldn't think of anything worse in life. I don't care how bedazzled I was. I could I could not think of anything worse in life. That's how much I love my soul. I love my soul. I love my soul. 
but if the plan was to try to destroy my reputation and destroy my family and destroy my love life and to attack my finances and to attack my mind and to attack my body, my physical appearance and to attack all aspects of my life. And that I would say, oh, this is too much suffering. It's too much pain. I can't endure. What do I do? What do I have to sign to sell my soul? That was not a well throughout through plan, you know, to humiliate me to the point where I can't take this. I can't take this level of humiliation and chastisement. That was not a well thought through plan. Because if you know a thing or two about Kenza, Kenza has endured quite a bit. So this idea of trying to humiliate me, like I lived with a catheter inside of me. I lived with a catheter where I couldn't pee on my own. I had to have a nurse change my bedpan for months. I couldn't walk for months with a, like literally I had a catheter inside of me and I couldn't pee on my own with a feeding tube. So the idea of humiliating somebody who has like li literally damn near been in like a vegetative state, I don't know. I don't know who thought this one up. You know, me and my son, we, we've, we've been through everything. The idea of poverty is not frightening when you've, when you've had literally times when you didn't have food to eat. So I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really know who thought of this whole plan because I'm a very, very strong woman. I've been through a whole lot. So there would be never a chance that I would say this is too much for me to endure. That would never happen. That would never, never, never happen. And, and based off of everything, everything is just uphill from now. Everything that I've uh, 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 endured. So I have to thank the enemy to some degree. Because after you've been through what I've been through, everything seems like a breeze to you. You know, like everything is easy to me because of all the things that I've been through. And so those who have decided to try to chastise me or humiliate me and things like that, you will, you know, you perhaps didn't do your research, but bottom line is, it's kum fire kum, Allah always has the final say. So you try to humiliate a chosen one, a person of God, and you end up getting humiliated. You end up learning, learning the lesson. It's, it falls on your shoulders. So, all of these things, every single thing, every single stone that they throw at you will be used for your rise to build your house. All the adversity will be used for your rise. And pray on that. Say every ill will, all the shade that they throw on me and the reputation and the smearing and all of these things. Let me transform it. Let me be an alchemist. Let me build it from my rise. Let me turn it into a song. Let me write a bit. Let me dance it out. Let me use that to fuel my voice, fuel my ability. Let me meditate on this. Allow this to expand my mind when I'm analyzing the way this whole thing went down. Oh, wow, I never thought of this before. Oh, maybe it was this. Maybe it was that. All of these things, expanding my mind, expanding my mind to the possibilities and then the possibilities of life. Understanding that a lot of these things that have been coerced have been uh, coerced with, with the um, designation of a very minuscule view. Right now, we're, you know, the, the new way of... of this pandemic is going down, forced quarantine and things like that. These are things to give you a myopic perspective to make you short-sighted, but we are the visionaries. What do I mean by that? It's to give you a myopic perspective, meaning that if you knew the world, like that's why I say like one of the blessings of abundance is the a blessing and ability to be able to travel and travel early on like get your kids exposed let your children you let your children travel the world because what what it's going to do is going to go it's going to open their minds to the possibilities of life because what they want to do is they want you to be in a very small thing right very small small thing and so they in, in case you win and they bombard you with all of their indoctrination but the thing is you're way bigger than that. So you may not be popping in this zip code, but you could be a superstar in that zip code. 
You may be small in this area, but you may be really like big in another, but they want to keep you in case they want you to not know. You go to another location, the minute you step out your door, everybody's like, can I please just take a picture of you? Can I please just take a picture of you? Who are you? What, what are you? Can I help you? Can I do this? Blah, blah. But in another location, they're trapping you, trying to enslave you, trying to keep you myopic, trying to get inside of that mind to keep you in a very minuscule view as far as the perceptions and the reality of life. And I probably will end up doing another post about that because this is a large part of the reason why they want to keep certain people very poor so they don't understand the possibilities of life. If you only wake up to the hood and all you know is the hood, then you don't know that you... You don't you don't understand you don't want to, you don't know what the possibilities of life are in, in another context anyways y'all today let you be great be great today celebrate all your gifts today give most praise to the creator today be excellent today much love 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 up on somebody today and definitely love up on yourself today peace